Hey guys, welcome back to another Red Beard Outdoors episode. We are getting ready to head down south to Texas um, and warm up and get out of this cold. Um, it's about 15 degrees right now. It's pretty dang cold here. And uh, we're looking forward to going down there to where it's a little bit warmer, about 60s, 70s, doing some bird dog training. And we will be competing in a trial down there also. So we'll be near the San Antonio area. Hopefully I can do some fishing and and do a lot of bird dog training. So we got the trailer partially loaded up. It's almost ready to go. And we're leaving bright and early in the morning. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Alexa, stop. This is my new horse, Pringles. She's kind of an asshole. She's also only five, so... I guess she that makes her allowed to be an asshole. I don't know. She's already broken a window on the trailer. And uh, gotten herself into a lot of trouble so far. Uh, let me show you some pictures of that. Yes, she does not like to be alone. She has to be with her friends. Um, whenever you leave her by herself, she uh, likes to rear up and and break windows and stuff. So that's what she's good at. We got to teach her not to do that anymore. So Pringles has become top mayor of this group. Surprisingly, I'm surprised these older ones let her become the top dog of the group, but uh, she's pretty much in charge. Very, very ornery. Hey, quit! I think she knows we're getting ready to go on a trip, and she doesn't want to go. Quit! steadily climbing uh, when we loaded it was 14 degrees 
we kept the horses blanketed for warmth and the dogs have a tarp over their crates and then they also have hay in their crates and so all those animals back there are generating a lot of heat trying to stay warm so they're uh they're going to be pretty comfortable back there we have all the windows shut up um so it should be pretty warm back there it's supposed to get up to 48 degrees today at some point we'll probably have to uh unblanket the horses we have roughly a seven hour trip and it's already been three and a half hours and we've barely made any headway the issue that we have is we board our horses outside of town and so we have to go get them pick them up drive back drive back through town get out to the interstate so it's kind of a long haul you know it took three and a half hours to to load get horses and get going out of town so uh, one day maybe we'll have that fixed but when we're driving our diesel truck we put it in tow haul and run the exhaust brake and that makes for really great stopping power it's uh, the best thing ever and then we uh, have to set our trailer brake and we usually set that about eight eight and a half before this trip we took the trailer in to get maintained and uh, had, had it looked over for a few things we fixed some running lights that were really bothering me we fixed the broken window I just showed you guys and then we always do a uh, have them look over the brake drums and tires and axles and everything and it turns out uh, we ran over something probably tire shrapnel or something wrapped up around one of the axles and tore some tore some wiring to one of the brake drums and so we were operating on three brakes again off the trailer so now we got four um, something cracked underneath there we had to get a lot of welding done and something was up with the leaf springs so it wasn't a very pleasant checkup like I thought it was going to be. Uh, ended up spending a lot of money on it. So uh, owning a horse trailer uh, isn't as cheap as you think it might be. So I kind of compare it to uh, owning a second house. So keep that in mind if you want a horse trailer with living quarters or an RV at that. It's, it's like having a second house. So yeah, we got a seven hour trip which when you're hauling a horse trailer you have to account for a lot more time because a lot more stops a lot of fueling a lot of checking the animals um, so we usually tack another hour or so onto that so we have about an eight hour trip we're trying to go from northeast kansas to the dallas fort worth area and we're going to hit up a campground there uh, that allows horses so uh, pretty cheap deal I think it was 25 bucks a night it's a state park and, it, and they have dry camping we're going to be running the generator our trailer is winterized so uh, we're not going to be dewinterizing it so we won't have water, restrooms, anything like that um, hopefully they have some Johnny houses or something uh, they do have water for horses but yeah, we'll have the generator going for power, and um, it's just an overnight stop, so it's not that big of a deal. We're going to load up. We're going to make the rest of the drive tomorrow. It'll be about a five-hour drive, and it'll probably take roughly six to seven hours, actually. Uh, we have to drive through Fort Worth. Fingers crossed that there's no traffic, but it's going to be early Sunday morning, so hopefully... There's not much, but every time I've ever driven through Fort Worth or Dallas, it's it's been awful. Usually because there's road construction. So when you're hauling this much weight you know, uh, through road construction, you have to go a lot slower, stay in the slow lanes, get a lot of people pissed off at you. But hopefully we can avoid all that. So we'll see what happens when we go through Fort Worth. So we're heading to winter camp for about a month where we're going to do a lot of 
lot of training, a lot of training with the dogs and training with Pringles, my, my new horse. Uh, she's got a lot to learn and uh, we gotta kind of get her bad attitude under control. So she's like a spoiled little five-year-old right now. So we're gonna work on that. No more breaking windows. We're also going to be competing in a field trial there, so um, we'll be doing that, and then afterwards, um, we're going, on the way home, we're going to stop at another field trial in the Tulsa, Oklahoma area, and uh, I think Kelly's going to do a little bit of judging there, and we're going to compete a little bit, so uh, you guys have that to look forward to have that to look forward to as long as our dogs do good. <laughs> so. Alright, we just hit our first stop. It cost $75.96 for 22 and a half gallons. Uh, we do not have very big fuel tank on this truck unfortunately so uh, we have to stop about every 200 200 to 250 miles so is what it is onward and forward so uh, we have my internet plugged in up here on the dash right there and we got 500 gigabytes of internet right there for us to use so uh, we're taking full advantage of that on this drive we're in rooms that were way too dark and I just like I can't see what's going on so I'm just gonna not watch it anymore uh, and then law and order season 21 is out that seems like guys are running into an issue here we're about to lose this plate instead of it flying off and popping all of our tires I'm gonna try to get it removed so okay guys I got it off it's some kind of old mounting plate for a sewer hose and where it was located was a terrible location um, that's probably why I got ripped off right away on the underside of that trailer right there um, it also has screws sticking out of it, so that would have destroyed our tire for sure. I'm glad I saw that. That's why I always do a walk around and check the trailer. Also, very important to travel with various numbers of different tools and whatnot. Um, we have almost everything in here that could possibly help fix our trailer, so we always travel with this little case right here. I'm all worried about everything now, so I thought I'd better check the bins up here we got lots of bins strapped down everything looks okay we randomly have the horses out at a gas station next to the highway all right it's currently 1 30 p.m it's 46 degrees out we just let all the horses out and we took their blankets off and while we did that, we let all the dogs out to go to the bathroom. As you guys saw, I noticed a piece of metal hanging from the trailer and I had to hurry up and get that off because that could have been disastrous. It could have destroyed a lot of stuff if that flew off, especially our tires. So we're in line to get fuel at the truck stop right now. get our second fuel up here see how much that one cost should be cheaper we're in Oklahoma now so Truck 
stop. Truck stops are really awesome when it comes to uh, pulling a trailer through it. But one thing that does suck about it is the uh, semi-grade fuel nozzles that they use. And uh, you really have to set it at a low speed or it'll definitely freak out on you or make a mess. I always tend to keep an eye on it because uh, I have had them uh, fill all the way up and overflow out the nozzle before so that's kind of annoying. So yeah, I usually uh, wash those and then we ended up getting deaf there too. Diesel exhaust fluid and um, it's way cheaper to get that stuff at a truck stop at a pump rather than buying a bunch of boxes to uh, dump into your truck. So uh, those little boxes are hard to dump in and and they cost at a premium way more than what they do at the pump. So just a little advice for you right there. We have a semi fuel card, so um, we're able to use those pumps without any issues. You just can't really roll up to them um, and expect to pay at most of these truck stops unless you have a like a like a trucker's uh, fuel card. So I briefly talked about that in my previous videos that we got it through a company that was offering it to RVers and uh, so far it, it, it works great uh, we really love it uh -huh. and we have an app that tells us uh, how much the fuel is actually discounted at the pumps so it provides a pretty big fuel discount um, the downside to truck stop is that the fuel's kind of uh, highly priced at the pumps so uh, if you don't have a means of uh, getting discounts at truck stops you definitely want to get that so we're on our third stop in Texas and we have 38 minutes till we get to our campgrounds. Um, this was an expensive fill up. This one was the most expensive, so. All right, let's get to the campgrounds.
Well, guys, we made it to our campgrounds. They have pretty nice horse stalls here, covered horse stalls. This place is awesome. How much did it cost? $7 per person plus a $15 camping fee. Pretty cheap. Nice overnight stay for us. Uh, it's gonna work work out pretty well. We're gonna blanket the horses and get the dogs out. know how much I love fishing so I gotta go check out this pond it's too bad we're here just for tonight uh it'd be nice if we could spend some time here got some nice riding trails right here and of course they got a pond nearby so no horses to the kid pond got their alfalfa, got their grain, got their molasses, got their water. Those are good to go, aren't you? Melody's over there by herself because she's the best behaved, so we kept these two together so they wouldn't be on her, especially her. it's pretty messy in here but we're not unpacking we're just staying here overnight and then we're hitting the road early in the morning uh, we got the generator going 
That noise you hear is the heater, it's fired up. We're going to eat some dinner and then uh, we got the internet hooked up and we're going to watch a movie here in a sec. We gotta get some food in our bellies though, we're starving. And then we have to go to the bathhouse to uh, get ready for bed. Yeah. <laughs> 